Hello and welcome to um, Yoga Solutions with me, Mark J. Aquaviva. Uh, um, today I wanted to look at sitting postures, uh, specifically seated forward bends. The, re the reason being is whenever I um, go and do a workshop, no? I did one of the World Yoga Festival recently, it's kind of um, a commonly requested posture because people have such difficulty with sitting. And um, so I thought today I would explain why and uh, offer you an approach to perhaps a, a seated forward bend or something um, to, to kind of clarify things for you and, and yeah, give you a solution. <laughs> so, yes, um, so sitting. The, the, the issue is passiveness, as in... Uh, we, most of us define sitting as relaxing down into a seat, which is okay. It's um, if if you're supported well by that seat, then it'll feel nice, feel comfortable, and you can relax. And there's not, nothing wrong with it, it provided it's not your lifestyle. You know, um, but um, if we're talk, talking about yoga, it, it yoga is meant to be this sort of um, Oh, what is it? <laughs> what is yoga? I, I, I think that, that yoga is meant to be a refinement. Uh, when you're practicing your yoga postures, you're meant to look for the meaning of the posture. There's an engagement. You, know, you, you wouldn't expect to do nothing whilst standing on your head, for example. But it's a similar thing. You're, you're trying to relax. You're trying to balance. Um, it's just that our expectations with sitting are passive. We expect to be passive, and the, the, that's not where the lancers lie. The, the yoga posture arises when you have a relationship to the ground and the space around you that leaves you able to let go in, into what you're doing, not fall out of what you're doing. And uh, most people sit by holding themselves up with their lower backs or by their groins. You know, they, they pull themselves forwards with their groins or their lower backs. Or, or they don't bother, they rest down and they lift their heads, like that. So um, all, all of those things involve holding your weight up, away from the ground, with tension. And um, that, I wouldn't call that a yoga posture, that's just a position that you're holding yourself in. So a yoga posture, well, best place to start is your interactivity with the earth. But... Um, uh, in sitting itself, it would be a bit confusing because of the familiarity that collapsed. So what I thought might be good would be to try a seated forward bend. Now, I don't mean launch yourself into the posture. Uh, I mean, we're going to start with one leg folded and one leg straight. And uh, intend to move towards a seated forward bend. So... What's the problem? The, the problem is we collapse our weight down. And um, when we do that, you're hanging up your spine. And in doing so, most people wouldn't think to engage from within to find support for, for what you're doing. Um, the reason being that we're not looking for support from our ground. If, on the other hand, you engage with your earth to feel supported, so, so it's a two-way relationship. It's not just your weight going down and the ground stopping you. It's you and the ground touching each other. There's a relationship there that you can take part in, that you need to take part in, if you want to feel supported. Okay. So, for example, this, this straight leg, instead of it hanging out here and you hanging back from it, bring it a little bit closer. Activate that foot so it becomes useful, so you can actually use it for something. And what you're going to use it for is support. I also would like that sit bone on that side to be a little bit away from the ground, um, and your weight on the other side. And then just use your hands anywhere you like to get a bit more relaxed in the upper body. And with that, uh, so, so I've got the right legs out and the left leg folding. So if your right heel can dig into the mat enough for you to be able to start to lean your weight towards it and feel supported by what you do, 
So I don't mean pushing yourself away from it. I mean giving your weight to it, and then it catches your weight by engaging. And that will involve something in the foot. Doing so will allow support to come back through, through this bone, through these bones, into your hip. If you, if you hold your weight back from it, you won't feel the support. But if you um, give your weight forwards to it, and your hands are there to make sure it's not too awkward, you know, if you give your weight forwards to it, it catching your weight will give you support. And you'll start to find that you are kind of um, more able to float away from the ground the more that that thigh bone is allowed to come back into you. Right. So that, that's a start, looking for support from your touch. The folded leg. So forget about that one for now. When, when you travel over the folded leg, what happens? Do you just collapse in front of it? Or if you bring the edge of that foot to the ground, like it's your support, and you roll your weight a little bit away from it, you can get a sense of the same thing, where you try and find a way of leaning your weight forwards with that with that pelvis light but how can you give your weight to the edge of that foot so the foot catches you because then you can start to get the experience of the body feeling supported by your own actions so it's about looking for support and if you can find support from the straight leg if you can find some support from the folded leg then the sit bones won't be plonked heavily on the ground. Well, but they, they will one at a time, but you'll be able to move away from them and allow things to uh, touch the ground in a supportive way. As in, you know, you're not unduly heavy on your sit bones. You're, you're giving some responsibility to the front of your base. If you can do that as you breathe, so if, you're, if your feet can catch your weight as you relax your weight to breathe, you get that result that the, the core, the, the belly muscles, should respond to you dropping your weight and kind of restrict the belly puffing up, which is a good thing because it, will mean, it means the breath comes up to support you in the upper body, right? you have to lift that weight. When you release that breath inside the belly, provided you're not holding the weight up, you will get closer to your belly because the emptying of pressure in here gives you the space to move as you relax your weight and you're relaxing your weight towards your feet in order to support you so you're getting space by using the ground for support the outcome of using the ground for support is something to do with uh, changes in the breath the changes that we're looking for is the stuff you're taught to do. As in, we need, you know, if you're on a forward bend, squashing your organs isn't going to give you a range of movement. But creating space in here first, and that's something you can do, you can, um, rather than dealing with how the ground supports you, you can di directly create space on the inside by using your belly muscles, by using the root cage. But then, when you've done that, you need to find support from your base. So uh, handles can be included in that, but um, if you find it from your feet, then having made that space, you give your weight to your feet so that the chest can rest down over the space you've created. You'll find a lot more range of movement. It doesn't require you hanging off your spine. In fact, the moment you decide to hang off your spine, you get sick. If you intend to feel supported by your ground, which can include a down type, and if that goes with letting go of your weight to breathe, then your core and ribs will be working to support you as you breathe. If you stay in that sense of being able to give your weight to your touch as you release the breath, you will remain supported, but the emptying inside the body will allow the spine to get closer to the ground.
at all times you need to be able to refer to the ground underneath your contour. So if I want to make more space on the straight peg side, I can roll away from it, lean into the heel of the straight, straightening leg, drop my weight to take the breath, drop my weight into that heel to, to breathe. And when I release the breath, so that, that moves my upper body side. When I release the breath, I can allow that hip to drop away from me because I empty on the middle. I empty within. So that a feeling of that leg, that thigh, dropping down, it's off the ground, it can drop down away from me when I release the breath. And as I release it within, that will automatically bring my spine closer to the ground. If it's this hip, this leg that's in trouble, then I can just roll away, away from it a bit to create some space. Take a breath by giving my weight to that foot. I'm not lifting to breathe. When I release that breath, it empties inside my core because the diaphragm travels up. My weight can travel down with it, but I l allow this hip to fall away from me in the process, giving me more steps. So little by little, by playing with Letting go of my weight into my supportive responses with the earth as I breathe. That sets me up to release the breath into deeper integration, into more space as I allow the hip to pull back away from me and release the breath. And the more I empty, the more um, range of movement I get. So if you were following, if you're following that, that would have been work for your legs. It would have been work for your arms. It would have most definitely been work for your core and your rib cage. But um, the, it becomes artificial work if you're holding yourself up at the same time as working your core and your ribs. If if those things work because you let go of your weight into support in order to breathe, then you are set up. You, you already are supported by the breath and your only job is to follow what happens when you let go of that breath within you and continue to trust the support that you're creating for yourself. Harder to understand in, in sitting postures, upright postures, mostly because when you're there, you're probably holding yourself there either with your groins or your lower back. So... The, the difficulty is in, in working out how to actually engage with the earth. And um, that's, that's, the, that's mo mostly what you need to do. You need to be able to let go of your weight into your support as you breathe. And that will be hard work for your legs. But that work isn't the posture. That's just setting you up to find alignment that you can release into with the release of the breath within so that your base can fall away from you and you can release away from your base. Okay, so uh, I think that covers it for the, um, for the public um, yoga solutions. I'll be um, doing a bit more on, on this, going a bit deeper with it uh, for my premium members. Um, uh, talking of which, last chance, um, I've got a, about, a, about two weeks till the end of the month. Um, in September, my prices prices for my memberships is going up um, into more and more into alignment with with uh, what I'm offering. Um, if you want to, uh, if you want to work with me um, on a regular basis, I would recommend getting a a, a membership of sorts. There are three kinds: silver, gold, and platinum. Depends on your level of commitment. And um, I'm upping the ante for what I offer my members uh, right now, whilst it's still uh, under underpriced. And um, you have about two weeks to sign up and lock in the current prices. And um, yes, so uh, I won't go into it too much. It'll be up on the website soon. I'm, I'm um, reorganising the website to. Uh, 
to display what I have on offer. And uh, if you're interested in work with me, working with me uh, more consistently, I've got some fabulous deals there um, that will be going up to a, a more appropriate price um, at the beginning of September. So, um, yeah, that's all, all I have to say on that. Uh, come and work with me at the weekend if you want to try it out. There's um, uh, weekend workshops, Saturday mornings, 10.30 to 1 p.m. It's always a deep dive into something of interest. Um, I'm uh, guided by by what people need. I, I usually have a theme uh, ready and waiting to apply to what people need. Uh, but uh, you can turn up on Zoom on a Saturday morning, 10.30, and um, yeah, have a profound experience with me. So if you like it, uh, oh, you can always um, you can also book a discovery call with me on Zoom where you have a chat about your needs, and I can um, well, we can see if we're a fit, you know. All right, um, that'll do from me. I shall see you same time, same place next week. Much love. Bye now.